Sometime late last year, I had read that the ER8411 wasn't having consistent upload or download speeds. And then recently I've been seeing some comments on YouTube asking me about the same kind of problem. But at the time I had one gigabit internet and well, I dismissed those comments entirely because I assumed that it was workingly fine. But now I have five gigabit internet and let's check out to see if those comments might have some truth to uh, them or not. I have connected my MacBook Pro that has a 10 gigabit adapter to the AT&T gateway that resides in my server closet. Now that we've got the Mac directly connected to the modem, let's go ahead and establish a baseline of at least so we can get an idea of what we could expect. So we're testing against speed test or a speed test server at UAH. I don't know what their internet's actually like or how good their connection is, but right off the bat, we're getting about 4,000 megabits per second. Now I know for a fact that I can do near five gigabit per second on some speed test servers, but in this case, because I just want to keep things simple, we're going to use open speed test. Now we are also getting over one gigabit and we touched on two gigabit per second there. So um, we're doing pretty good. We've got a pretty high latency for something that's pretty low or a school that's local to me. I mean, it's literally right down the road. All right. Now that we have our baseline established, let's go ahead and add some switches and the ER8411 to the mix and see what results we get. This black ethernet cable runs all the way back to my 10 gigabit capable adapter that's connected to the MacBook Pro. And of course my switch is connected to the ER8411 with a 10 gigabit DAC. Now that we've got the ER8411 and a switch in the mix, which are both 10 gig capable, let's run this test again and see what results we get. So clicking start here, Immediately, we're off to a pretty good start, hitting three gigabit per second, nearly touching four there, uh, but nothing abnormal, I would say. You know, this is like kind of typical, typical run variants, uh, in my opinion. Now, let's see what the upload is. Okay, that is pretty low. That is odd, I would say. It should at least be one gigabit, right? Uh, it shouldn't be that low. All right, for fun, let's test fast.com and see what we get here. Uh, 10 gigabit per second? That doesn't seem right. It looks like we're getting some bad communication from something in our loop here. Uh, 3.5 gigabit is what I would expect. Let's go ahead and click show more so we can do an upload test real quick. And well, it seems like we're hitting 200 megabits per second. It looks like we topped out at 300 there for a, a moment. But this isn't looking too good. Something definitely seems to be off here. Right, well, we're not seeing the upload speeds we want, so obviously the next logical step would be to try and update the firmware, right? Well, for some reason, even though there is a new firmware version available, I can't actually update the ER8411. So, uh, yeah. With that failing, the next logical step, I guess, is to reach out to TP-Link and see what they have to say about it. And according to them, the best way to fix this issue is by having the ER8411 in standalone mode and turning on flow control after applying the latest update. But I don't have my system in standalone mode. So I guess that means we're gonna have to factor reset the ER8411 and update the firmware. <sighs> All right, let's get to it. Thankfully doing the factory reset is very simple. I'm just gonna unplug everything first and then press and hold the reset button until it factory resets. Doing the factory reset is pretty straightforward. We do have to create a new user and password to do this. After we do that, all we need to do is, of course, get logged in with that same user and password that we just created. And then to update the firmware of the device itself, we're just going to go down to management. And then from management, we'll click on the firmware upgrade tab and then upload the firmware like we typically would. And then once we have that part complete and we wait for, I don't know, it feels like way too long. After the ER8411 finally rebooted, it decided to not work in the Firefox browser, so I'll have to switch over to Safari for the rest of this to make this work. Getting switched over, we can finally enable flow control, which can be found under Network WAN and the SFP Plus WAN 1 tab. Just enable flow control, click save, and make sure you have it, your system connected and you're good to go. I am seeing some improvement here, but it's not really the improvement I was hoping for. And for whatever reason, the UAH server that I was using Open Speed Test with it seems to be performing worse now, although the upload speed's higher, so that's good. Switching over to fast.com, we get a slightly better story, but interestingly, the upload speed's still not really that much better, or at least any better than I thought it would be. 
only capping out around 1.5 gigabit per second. So that's really strange. Switching back over to Firefox, we can now use the Amada Cloud Controller to re-adopt the ER8411 into our environment. And from here, things should work as you would expect, right? Well, it turns out the speed test results are a little lackluster. For some reason, UAH's speed test server still wasn't giving me the results I wanted to see. It was actually performing even worse now, only giving us 2000 megabits per second down and around 1500 megabits per second up which is an improvement, but not the improvement I wanted to see. So switching over to fast.com, we were able to get better results at 4.7 gigabit per second and 2.1 gigabit per second, but I know I can do a lot faster. So after breaking down and reluctantly switching over to open or to speedtest.net, things work like you would expect. I was able to get near five gigabit per second on upload and download. And that is truly impressive. Using the TLSM5310T on the WAN port on the ER8411, I'm using the SFP10GT connected to my MacBook Pro that's plugged in the Switch. And then I'm also using this 10 gig SFP plus DAC on the Switch and router. It's a little silly to me that I can't use the Amata Cloud Controller to update the firmware, yet if I switch to standalone mode, I can use the same firmware and update the ER8411. That's really weird. I'm hoping that TP-Link figures out how to fix this in the next release, which by the way, the rumor is that it should be available in about two months for a new firmware version. And if that's true, then this problem should go away for everyone. And hopefully uh, we either get an option in the Amata Cloud Key to enable flow control, or it just enables flow control automatically. I, so we'll see what happens there. Only time will tell. Anyway, so with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thought it was a pretty interesting investigation and in how to get from point A to point B and fix the problem. And with all that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.